First thing I should do is say that I'm actually a member of a credit union. Great. <laughs> I've got a card there. So <laughs> prove it. That's a, it's a Visa debit card from <coughs> the Bank Fund Staff Credit Union in uh, Washington, D.C. So when I was working at the IMF, uh, I was a member of the credit union there. I'm still a member. Uh, it's a good, solid organisation. Um, I think it has about 70,000 members. And uh, it's been there since after the war, just growing steadily. Provides you know a good range of uh, banking services. So we're, whenever I'm in the U.S., I use my my little uh, de uh, Visa debit card. And um, <clears throat> so it sort of demonstrates for me that you know, I think there is a, a good niche, a clear niche role for uh, mutuals in the financial services. And indeed, <clears throat> since the global financial crisis and the sort of increase in risk aversion that we've seen, I think that's probably, at least for a good few years uh, to come, will be a growing uh, role. Anyway, <coughs> what, I, what I wanted to do, um, given we have um, distinguished uh, guests from overseas, I thought I'd just talk a bit about the New Zealand uh, mutual uh, financial system and the role of the mutuals in New Zealand. So, the, in terms of just the general shape of uh, the mutual component of the New Zealand banking system, uh, we have sort of banks and non-banks. As you know, in New Zealand, the system is dominated by the banks. And the mutuals really are quite a small proportion. There's three, I would say, three of the 21s are loosely defined. Three of the 21 banks in New Zealand are mutuals. Uh, in spirit, if not in exact definition. So I'm including uh, TSB, SBS, and uh, Cooperative Bank. Of course, we've got Rabobank here as well, which is a cooperative in the sense it's owned by uh, its Dutch customers. But of course, from the New Zealand perspective, uh, we don't. I wouldn't think of it as a as a co as a cooperative in the New Zealand context. So only. Uh, close to 10 billion assets, or about 2.5% of the banking system. But the non-banking system, it's a bigger proportion, about 20%, uh, where we have 24 credit unions, five building societies, so we have about 30 uh, mutuals out of um, 45 non-banks. And from the liability side of things, it's, it's pretty Generally speaking, it's, it's uh, close to full funding from retail deposits. So it's a pretty simple structure. On the lending side, uh, we have the mutual banks on the left, mutual non-banks on the right, and it's a pretty simple structure dominated by residential mortgages. 82% uh, in the case of the mutual banks, 60% in the case of the non-banks. The other main component is consumer finance, uh, either unsecured or uh, secured on, on motor, ve motor vehicles, for example. Um, coming on to capital, the mutuals tend to hold a higher level of capital uh, in order to offset the limited ability to raise new capital. And in fact, you know, when we're giving a license to a new mutual a bank, a non-bank, we take that into account, the, the inability or difficulty of raising new capital. Therefore, we tend to expect a higher percentage um, on the book. And we have Banks and non-banks of a similar similar percentages, about 15% capital ratio, this sort of tier one capital, as a percentage of risk-weighted assets, compared to an average currently of about 10% the non-mutual uh, sector. So they're a well-capitalized bunch. Non-performing loans, so this is a reflects the risk 
And generally here with the messages, it's generally a low risk sector relative to the rest of the financial sector. Non-performing loans currently are about 1% compared to uh, sort of 1.5% or a bit higher for the uh, non-mutual banks. For the non-banks, the difference is, is, is rather more stark because the mutuals here in New Zealand are the credit unions and the building societies. The non-mutuals uh, are the, the finance companies. And we all know in New Zealand, the finance companies have had a pretty bad trot. <coughs> a number of them have fallen over. But the uh, building societies and credit unions have effectively differentiated themselves from the finance companies and have performed a lot better. And that's reflected in this slide, which shows the growth rate, growth in assets for the mutuals versus non-mutuals, basically since the GFC, since the financial crisis. So with banks, the red bars are the mutuals, and the blue bars are the non-mutuals. These are banks, non-banks. So we were just talking about finance companies versus building societies and credit unions. So essentially the finance company sector has fallen, has shrunken since the GFC. Growth rates, you know, negative 10%, 20% per annum. Whereas the mutual sector has just had, you know, continued small, positive, steady growth through that period. And similarly with the banks, the mutuals have grown on average more strongly than the non-mutuals. Um, obviously, these are a much bigger scale. Remember, the, the banks, so the non-mutuals are still the dominant force in the market, but the mutuals have performed better than the growth rates in, in the current environment. So, Broadly, um, strengths and weaknesses. The strengths of the mutuals are pretty clearly strong franchise value, a stable customer base, that conservative risk appetite that I was talking about, and also minimal reliance on offshore funding. So they depend and get, uh, on their home base uh, retail deposit funding, much more stable. The weaknesses, however, are limited ability to raise new capital and to some extent a vulnerability on the liquidity side in the sense that a lot of the, most of those retail deposits, are, a lot of them are at core. So in principle, they're at risk from a run. But of course, because of the strong loyalty, um, they haven't actually experienced uh, runs, or certainly not in the New Zealand environment. But there is that vulnerability there. So, uh, to, so to summarise then, um, the mutual sector is a small but growing share of the New Zealand financial system. It's got a solid credit record based on um, housing and consumer finance. There is some vulnerability around the funding base, but that has been mitigated by strong customer loyalty. And as I said at the outset, um, I think with the, the mutuals do have this niche, and in the current environment globally um, of risk aversion and uh, home bias, the home bias is increasing. So there's a shift from sort of global banking to local banking. And so in that environment, it's pretty clear to me that um, if anything, the mutuals are probably going to continue to increase their share um, over, over the coming years. So that's a, that's a sort of a quick uh, snapshot of the role of mutuals in the New Zealand financial system. And I'll finish there. Thank you.